Zechariah chapter 12. Sometimes when I'm reading this, I'm just not quite sure what it means. So I'll just read you the Matthew Henry commentary on this. The apostle, Galatians 4, 25 to 26, distinguishes between Jerusalem, which is not, now is, and is in bondage with her children, the remaining carcass of the Jewish church that rejected Christ, and Jerusalem that is from above, that is free, and is the mother of us all, the Christian church, the spiritual Jerusalem, which God has chosen to put his name there. In the foregoing chapter, we read the doom of the former and left our carcass to be a prey to the eagles that should be gathered to it. Now in this chapter, we have the blessings of the latter, many precious promises made to the gospel of Jerusalem by him who, verse one, declares his power to make them good. It is promised, point one, that the attempts of the church's enemies against her shall be to their own ruin, and they shall find that it is at their peril if they do her any hurt, verses 2 to 4 and 6. That the endeavors of the church's friends and patrons for her good shall be pious, regular, and successful, verse 5. And I'll read the, the first point from verse 1 to 8. Here is point number 1. The title of this charter of promises made to God's Israel. It is the burden of the word of the Lord, a divine prediction. It is of weight in the delivery of it. It is to be pressed upon people and will be very pressing in the accomplishment of it. It is a burden, a heavy burden to all of the church's enemies, like that talent of lead, chapter 5, 7, 8. But it is for Israel. It is for their comfort and benefit, as even the fiery law, Deuteronomy 33, 2. So the fiery prophecies and fiery prophecies that comes from God's right hand come for them. The word that speaks terror to their enemies speaks peace to them, as the pillar of cloud and fire, which turned a bright side towards the Israelites to direct and encourage them, but a black side towards the Egyptians to terrify and dispirit them. Happy are those that have even the burdens of God's word for them, as well as the blessings of it. Hmm. Again, like uh, the study in Revelation, when you bear these bad news and prophecies against nations, it's, it's for their judgment, but also for a remnant. Uh, it's, it's so that they would receive mercy, repent, and be saved. God is merciful in that way. First, we need the bad news before the good news comes.